How you going? Jack here. Hope you're doing well. Uh, here's a little video of me and a friend of mine from the UK called Liam, who uh, attended the uh, protests in London the other day about the whole lockdown social distancing uh, thing that we find ourselves in at the moment. And there was lots of guest speakers and he basically tells his opinion on it, what he felt about it. And yeah, it was a really cool conversation. We all went into some rabbit holes, some stuff that will probably make the... Uh, you know, the common man, as it were, or the sort of middle of the road kind of people, materialist people, get a little bit like edgy and think the rest of what we say is ridiculous. But that's okay. If you're uh, if you're on this train ride with us already, then you'll be you'll feel right at home. So yeah, this is Liam. He's a great guy. I uh, hope you enjoy the talk. And yeah, peace. So yeah, went to um, went up to Trafalgar Square in London this passing Saturday, which was 26 September 2020. Um, Caught the train up, met a few people on the train. Um, and yeah, as I'm walking through London um, to get to Trafalgar Square, uh, like I was saying to Jack, there's just sub subliminal messages everywhere um, in London. Like just, just trying to, you know, if you're, if, if you're not awake to it, if you're not, um, if you're not paying attention, um, it just catching, it's just catching you and it's, it's sinking in in some level. Like the one that I, I was, I, I, one that I saw was, um, you know, there's, there's these adverts, not just in London, but we're, we're up and down the country now. It's these um, confused.com finance website. You know, it's a beautiful woman. You ca catches your eye, yellow dress, um, with the caption straight in front of you, I'm confused.com. You know, and you're taking that in you, on a subliminal level. And it's just, it's all sorts of things like that. Trying to like push in the, oh, you're a hero you're such a good person for wearing a mask and staying inside and don't kill granny and all this nonsense, you know? And, um, and, and, um, but the best one, I, I walked past a, a toy store, um, toy store. Um, and it, it just caught my eye. They were playing some, some screechy music. It just, the vibration just didn't sit right at me and it caught, caught my attention. And, um, there was a Jack and Jill, like young woman, young man, um, figures, dressed up dancing and as I walked past them you could tell these two people just weren't into it they were just like oh my god we gotta do this again and um, as I walked past the shop I heard the lyrics to this um, music that was playing and it was it was on the lines of um you know, we are here to get you to talk to take all your energy magic and I stopped in my tracks and I looked at my friend and she looked at me and I said Please tell me you heard that. Please tell me that wasn't just me making Yeah, because you're thinking I'm going nuts now, like, at this yeah, point, like yeah. what's going on. And um, thank God she looked at me and said, I heard that too. And I said, did you hear this? And I repeated it to her. I said, Liam, if you didn't grab my arm, I wouldn't have sort of clocked it. But because you paid, I, I, you rejogged my memory to catch it. And I was like, that is crazy. And the kid's story, you know, and it's, it's going on everywhere. And then, yeah, we got to um, Trafalgar Square and it was a hell of a turnout. Um, I couldn't tell you the exact number of people that were there, but it was, it was you know, Trafalgar Square was rammed with wow. people. Um, you know, police were everywhere. Police were a little bit, at the beginning, the police were a bit cagey, um, weren't really sort of a bit cold shoulderish. you know what I mean? They didn't want, didn't want to make any eye contact with anybody. Um, and then, yeah, it was from the minute people started talking at Trafalgar Square, it was all about peaceful protest it's a peaceful protest we've gone through all the right channels um the local council is aware that we're here we're aware of what we're trying to do um big thank you to the police for keeping everybody safe um we even did a uh, nice. minute silence. yeah we, we even did a minute silence for the wow. um, for the police officer that was shot on friday evening wow uh, in croydon the big big respect thing for the police um, you know, and it, it was peaceful. It was music. People were singing. People were dancing. It was it was great. You know, it was a really wow. good atmosphere. Yeah, really good atmosphere. And then you know, oh, uh, the, the talking began. They had you know a lot of activists there. Um, they had they had doctors speaking there, health professionals speaking there. Um, yeah, it was awesome. It was a really good turnout. Um, wow. And then um, just before David Ike was going to speak. Oh God! So I went. Yeah, 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 man. Yeah, well, we will get onto that one. It might be a little controversial. Fucking we'll uh, yeah. Yeah. 
Like this is it, mate. We'll, we'll get into that. And I might shoot myself in the foot, but hey, I'm gonna see what I'm. What I'm yeah. Yeah. Might be totally wrong, we went. We went to get some food, and on the way back, must have been like eight riot vans came rushing towards Trafalgar Square, <laughs> like full power, like beeping the horns. Everyone had to get out of the way, full power. I've never seen. It's like something out of a movie, mate. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. And that, <clears throat> Here we go. Something's gonna, something's gonna happen here. There's, there's, there's no need for that. Mm. No, there was no trouble. Honestly, it was no trouble. Repeatedly sat thanking the police. Peaceful protests. Um, get back to Trafalgar Square. David likes talking now. He's and he's he was revving the crowd up. You know, he he did a good speech. Uh, everyone, you could see everyone was is, was very emotionally invested into David Ike and yeah, you know, people felt, really got the people going. And um, yeah, he finished speaking, and within five minutes of him finishing speaking, um, right, all the riot police turned up, suited and booted, um, batons flaring, um, went in and just cut, the, just went in like um, like it was a. I've never seen anything like it. Really, it was just like lying, <laughs> just cutting through, cutting through the crowd, and then section the crowds off, like division everybody off, and um, yeah, they, they pushing, shoving. It was all. It was there was no like. There's no love loss, let's put it that way. And yeah. you know, clash of people who weren't really up for it. And battles came out and you know, a couple of people got smacked about. Uh, oh my god. Still, you know, you can see it. There's, there's the videos are there. I've seen the videos. And yeah, there was but there was there was no pushback from the protesters. It was from yeah. what I could see. And um I, I, I asked one of the police officers, I said, um, what's going on? There's like there's no need for this. And they turned around and said there was a risk assessment. <laughs> done for this uh, protest yeah, I know, <laughs> by the council and they deemed that as soon as David I could finish speaking that the risk assessment was no longer valid and um, it was now an, in, an incredible risk of people catching coronavirus and breaking coronavirus laws and where they had to go in and break it up and you know I'm putting one on one, on one together I might be making four but uh, yeah. you know I just found it ironic that they came in right when Ike had revved the crowd up and everyone was pumped, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we'll get, we'll come back to that. I'll just tell you the little story, and then the, the couple of the organisers managed to sort of get the people um, away from the police, and we got a march going um, through the streets of London, which was something else, mate. I was liberating. I've never experienced anything like that in my life. Wow. Um, yeah, quite a few thousand people <coughs> through, through the of London up to Hyde Park. And when we got to Hyde Park, the police were there waiting for us in the in the pursuit of the boot again, and it, it kicked off again. Um, so you know, it's just there was no need for it. There was no, there was no, no one was burning cars, no one was kicking off. You know, yeah, it it's bizarre, out. isn't it, that they want to go in and cause the trouble themselves? You know, yeah. No need for it. What's your take on that? Have you got a, have you got an opinion as to what the energy is happening there with the people? The feeling of liberation is almost countered by the feeling of oppression by the policemen. Do you know what I mean? It's almost like a balancing counterforce. Not balancing, but it's almost like, no, too much. It's like this, the direct manifestation of a, an oppressive system right there and then manifesting, isn't it? Like, no, you won't march peacefully and feel liberated through central London. There will be bands coming out. And, you know, like, what's, what's your take on it? Um, well, before <clears throat> I go on to that, I'll just say, like, there was n there's been nothing in the, in the mainstream media or, or in the UK, um, you know, all that I have seen is protest, yeah. uh, protesters clash with police. Yeah. There's nothing about what's going on, why we're there, what our thoughts are, yeah. how you, how many people there. So you, straight away talking about like a, um, closing down uh, any free speech. You got it there. No one's pushing it. It's nothing on Facebook. There's nothing on YouTube. It's very difficult to find anything. Yeah. Um, my take on it. I was given some really good advice by a chap in America. And I asked him, so I'm going up to the protests in London. I said, what do you think about the whole protests? Because I was apprehensive all week about going, but I just felt I had to go. Yeah. And um, he, said me, he said to me, um, nothing wrong with protesting, but it's not my thing anymore. I kind of see through it. And I said, how do you mean? He said, when you go up there, stand with the people, but remember you are a sovereign being and try and feel 
if you're amongst fellow sovereign beings coming together for a cause. Yeah. It's just a big group thing. Like, uh, really wise. That that's wise. Me. So wise. Stuck with me. Um, and I, I will say, I will say this. I met a lot of people who obviously small business owners and currently they're, you know, in the UK, they're struggling. You know, there's so many people who are closing up shops. So many people who haven't got jobs to go back to. So there's a, there is, there's a, there's a fear. There's, there's, you know, fighting for their livelihoods, Jack, you know, and yeah. understand why they're angry, mm. why they want to go up there and, and demonstrate their feelings, the whole thing. But, you know, I'm in, I'm in the crowd. I, the words are in my, in my mind. And I'm noticing there's a lot of people walking around drinking with alcohol. And I'm like, hey, fair enough, you want to drink alcohol, it's not, not my cup of tea. And there's cannabis everywhere. Fair enough, you want to smoke cannabis, it's not my cup of tea. And I'm just feeling it. And I'm just like, there's a lot of, it's like, a, there's a, there's a, there are individuals there, but there's a big feeling of like a cult following. You know what I mean? There's, a, there's like a cultish vibe to it. Um, you know, I might get shot for saying this, but I, it's just the way it felt to me. And, you know, I just, there was just, just something about it just didn't feel comfortable to me. And yeah. it's like, my, and coming out the back of it and digesting the whole experience is like, people want change. People want that um, system to change. It all starts with changing yourself, you know? And I know it's very easy to, it's, it's the biggest cliche thing in the world, but you know, the, the deeper you go into like the, the metaphysical yeah. sort of side of things, you realize that like, you know, the planets are us. We are the planets there. We've got them inside of us. And the, the old, like, if you want to change your lucky stars, you've got to change yourself. And I just felt like that is the true work that affect doing the hard work on yourself to change the microcosm to change them your macrocosm it's, it, you and i both know it's so difficult and, and you get put through it and i just feel like you know nothing wrong with people coming together but it's you know it's got to be like, it's got to be some self work being done it's got to be that that mm -hmm. self work rather than going up there and and oh yeah it's not right it's not right all this it's not right that's <laughs> why like keep like sort of throwing a bit of hate out there but you're you're only gonna you know as we found with the police that fire is gonna be met with fire yeah and i think it's all got to be done inside wow and when we realize that like so much of this shit that's thrown at us we don't need and it's all lies yeah and uh, yeah i just feel i felt that mate i felt that there was a big presence of Let's all gang together and then show our unhappiness. But there's an inside internalness that needs to change first. Yeah, amazing, bro. That is really like, wow, blew my mind. Out there, you're so on point with that, and it resonates with my feelings about, um, in general, about how I've never felt comfortable in groups, like I, like how social systems work and how you you get into a group and people are always like, oh, am I this? Am I a skater? Am I a chav? Am I like a musician? Am I a biker? Like, where is my identity? And whenever I found myself within a group, I've always found myself like, oh, I don't like this anymore. Like, and I've never known how to word it before, but there's a resonance that I don't like with it. <clears throat> and it is this, it's this lack of sovereignty. It's, it's cultishness. It's giving yourself over to the group. And then you, you become generalized and attached to it, you know? And I feel like society actually quickens you into groups constantly. So for example, you'll say, I'll say I disagree with lockdowns and social distancing. So people blow up my Facebook comments going, oh, you're this and you're that. You're, how can you not care about people? And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't say that, oh, I did it because I'm fucking pissed off with old people for like making me stay in my house. That's not my reasoning, you know? But they've lumped me in with this idea, this generalized quickened version of, of like so the grouping is done very fast and yeah like you can feel it and i know what you meant i would have felt the same as you man and when i when if i'd have gone to that place i'd have been like you know what i like these guys i i, I resonate with things these people say but 
I can't give up my sovereignty or, or anything. I'm Jack. I'm a little bit of a skater, a little bit of a musician. I'm a little bit of a hippie and I'm a little bit of a football fan. I'm a little bit of a lads drinker. Do you know what I mean? I'm a little bit of all these things and I will not be placed in one of the boxes. And <clears throat> yeah, I'll, I'll want to do my own thing, you know, as well. And if it's, if it does, if it isn't like that, if it isn't coming together for that, then, um, I, I, they'll just be, a, it will just be, in opposition to another force at some point, won't it? You know, if it's not about individual liberation for everybody or f for each man, then it's it's going to find an op opposition somewhere. Someone is going to find it an oppose. You know, if there's yeah, there'll be dissonance within the ranks at some point. So yeah, man, it's like it's amazing that you saw that. That let's talk about David Ike. Do you, do you think he's legit? Do you think he's legit a truth guy or do you think he's like an agent? Like, because I think he's, I mean, Alex Jones, for example, I think he's straight up a, like a disinformation agent and he's used to kind of like rile up emotions and stuff. And I, I, I figure that David Icke is the same thing, to be honest, but I don't know. I'm not going to say uh, he might just be a guy who's like found a career in this and kind of believes it. And now he's kind of playing a role of himself, you know, and you know how people just end up kind of in these situations and but i do think it's really not helpful having david icke on the stage at this point when you're trying to win people to the cause he's not the best person to be like promoting the idea of like the opposition to the um like cv and stuff is the guy who goes around with the most crazy ones like you know I've, I've taken psychedelics i can entertain the idea of reptilians from the fifth dimension do you know what i mean i can entertain it but I'm not going to. I'm not going to have the guy who leads with that as my spokesperson to try and get the normies on board with some matters of science and civil liberties and stuff. I'm going to pick someone a little bit more. Do you know what I mean? A little bit more identifiable to the mainstream and that. So I, I, I kind of figure he's a plant in that regard, which is sad, really. But at the same time, I don't dislike what he says. <laughs> No, I like what he says and I like he I like that he um I like his passion and stuff. He's a good speaker, he's a talented man, but like yeah, what's your thoughts on that? I mean when I was fifteen <clears throat> I first stumbled across David Ike's books and that was the first sort of domino for me to sort of say, well, hang on, question. Yeah. What's going on here? And you know, there was a point where I was like I would have, I would have marched for David Ike. Do you know what I mean? I would have, if David Ike says, you know, let's go to war. I would have been there, mate, on the front line. Yes, yes, you know. Yeah. Uh, revolution, you know. And um, I've seen him twice. Um, and, I, but, you know, I've always had questions. There's been, there's been blanks from what he said in my mind, and I've not been able to answer them through his texts, nor anybody else on the same level. Um, and it's only, you know, you, we'll, we'll go there, mate, you know, we'll go there. Um, it's only you and I are both on the same page at this, but it's only when you actually, of all people, put me on to information about Flat Earth. A, a very good friend of mine sort of showed me it square, like, to my eyes. So it was like, look at the horizon. What do you see? Water doesn't curve. Um, and I've just felt that, like, seed plant in me and it. I just felt the reboot, reboot button get pushed and it took me a year. And then you sort of brought it up. It was like, look, you've got to check out, you know, wakey, wakey, Mark Knight, um, Santos Bonacci and just listen to what they got to say. And look, I can't tell you that the earth's flat. I don't know, but mm. I know for a fact that we do not live on a spinning globe going around a, a burning gaseous mass. <laughs> do you know what I mean? In yeah. an ever expanding vacuum that we call a universe. You know, it's just total fucking bullshit. <laughs> Pardon my French. Yeah. But, um, <clears throat> but and when I when I started going down that route, man, like things I opened up lightning quick. Like too quick maybe. But it but I just grabbed hold of it and went with it and it just opened me right up. And now for me, like, you know, the whole cosmology syncretism flat earth sort of stuff is the foundation and if it if it fits in i'll build up from there mm. and i just feel like ike has banged on for a long time about some really good points i can't knock him for that and i believe he'll take you to a certain level down the rabbit hole 
but then you won't be going any further because he bangs on about the, the moon being hollow and Saturn's rings yeah. um, projecting a, you know, you know, Saturn, Saturn is a conscious being and it does project, uh, a, like it does project yeah. um, vibrations to a certain degree, but you know, it's, it's um, it, the way he, his angle on it is, is, you know, it makes you think that, you know, Mars is a, is a big lump of rock when it's a, uh, you know, it's evidence is coming out that it's more conscious than, than we think, you know? Yeah. And uh, I think the more the, that that's, that's the point. And, and so many people get stuck there when there's so many levels to go. So yeah. many more levels. That's the Man, common I'm, thing about gatekeeping, I'm, right? Is that you yeah, feed yeah. people, you feed people enough and you keep them at the thing and you're like, yeah, this is as far as you're getting. And, there's no there's no kind of um that's the thing with him as well as there's no there's never a solution it's always like look at these guys here's the evidence of their wrongdoing and look what they've done and goodbye see you next time you know and everyone's left like oh fuck you know there's none of this like get together get on the land do your yoga do your fucking read the upanishads like get into like breath work there's none of that shit you know which is like i guess it's kind of like for me, that's where it's like, that's where you've got to go with it. You know, you've got to go into your own practice and everything else to get further. There's only so much you can do from the words, from the brain, you know, and, but there's other people who are great and it does, he's a stepping stone, what you could say, you know, and he does, he does open doors, but um, regardless of whether you think he's an agent or whether he's not, he, he might be, but he might not be aware of it. You know, that's how crazy the reality works. You know, he might be doing the bidding of something without really understanding truly who he's working for. Because, you know, I think a lot through all this um, that people, you know, people are like, oh, it's one big conspiracy, is it? Everyone's in on it, are they? And I'm like, well, no, no. Like, that's not how these things work. You know, when we're talking about cultural engineering, like everyone's not in on it it's that everyone has been culturally engineered to accept this as being an okay thing um it's not that everyone's in on it and knows that they've been culturally engineered it's that everyone has been subtly moved to the place where they're accepting it just like in the 1930s with the you know like leading up into like the world world war ii and, and the holocaust like that isn't a conspiracy where every single german was in on it do you know what i mean that was a series of events that a uh, hardcore propaganda um, like system that led to genocide. Now what we're seeing isn't genocide, it's much less, it's much less of a conspiracy than that. And they claim in the 1940s to not have known what was going on. Like the, the British and that were like, oh shit, we come here and they've killed all these people. They've, they've done a genocide. So <laughs> like that would have been considered a conspiracy, right? Because they didn't know about it and it went on, but it wasn't a conspiracy. It was a, like a long sequence of events. And this is what we're looking at with things, isn't it? It works in like really mysterious ways, all of these um, complex hierarchies, how these agendas kind of filter through. And <clears throat> I think the difficulty is, man, for like the likes of me and you is that we are so open and so kind of like, um, not we're like entertainers of many different ideas. I don't think we're solid in a, this is how the world is, this is how it is, and you've got it wrong, and you've got it. We're just saying like, we don't fully, we don't have eggs in your basket, okay? And we don't actually have a basket that we want you to put our eggs in. We're just saying that like, we're exploring language, we're exploring the nature of reality in a different way. And we feel that there's a lot of um, lies being Mate. presented, you know? And there's a lot of lies. And, I, and we also think that, like, we can walk you through some of it and we can show you some of it if you've got the time and you're patient enough to do the knowledge and to, like, look at these situations, look at history, look at everything holistically, look at how it's possible for such lies to propagate in a society without it being a conspiracy like a wide conspiracy that all the doctors are in on and it's not like that we me and you both know it doesn't function like that you know <clears throat> so 
but we it's hard for us to, to talk to people the common man about it because he is so um he and she are so unwilling to relent on so many uh, things that have just been drilled in since birth one of them being like like you just said cosmology like we um even though you've got the likes of elon musk out there saying you know the world is a simulation now simulation is a metaphor basically for like um you know, the world is made of fucking zeros and ones, like you're in a matrix, like so, but they're so, but they're, they're willing to argue and get angry. If you say, oh, this matrix, it, by the way, it, it isn't rendered as like a sphere, it's rendered in like just how we render computer games in like a, you know, in basically like a three dimensional cube kind of space. Um, they're like, no, no, it's not, we've been to the moon and all this. And they've got one of the, the highest scientists, the, you know, the highest, guys in their system saying that you know he sent cars into outer space apparently they say and he's saying it but still they can't bring themselves to like have a conversation with you about like there being a different kind of cosmology or it being like a different it's geometry it's like you're arguing over geometry at the end of the day it's but me and you are like kind of past having this oh, i don't know it just makes it hard it makes it hard I'll for just me say this, I'll say it. I'll say it. anybody anybody that's like Anybody that knows 9 11 is like an absolute, you know, <laughs> 9 11. Yeah, all right. So that's, a lot of people wake up with 9 11. Yeah. When you start looking into 9 11, you realize that was a lie. Then you look at, oh, the way we're fed is a lie. The way we're, what we see as medicine is a lie. The yeah. way we're governed is a lie. More and more of these things that you're looking at is adding up as lies. Yeah. Who's you that they're lying to you about where we are yeah there's two things that i feel you need to orientate in this life and that's who you are and where you are <laughs> once you've got those two things you know you've got a good you've got a good quarter of the map yeah yeah now they've taken away who you are as some uh, evolved ape and once you grab that and you take it, take you, then you start looking at right, where are we? You know? And once you've got that, you've got a good idea of what we're doing here. So, just all I'll say is anybody that does listen to this, mm. who's adding the lies up in that pile, mm. think about those two things. Do you think yeah. they lie to you about those two things? Yeah. Well said, man. Well said. Like, I, just if anyone is, happens to still be listening who is, um, believes that 9-11 is exactly as the report put it. Like, how is it? I just want to say to them now, like, how, how can you believe that, like, they found a passport on the floor that wasn't disintegrated? Do you know what I mean? Like, just, they just found it, and it was like within the next day they were like, this was the passport of the, one of the guys who did it. Who done it? And it's like the find of the... Who does that? Some detective, they're like... Boys, I, I got a clue. I smell a clue. It's like, it's put there on purpose. <laughs> it's put there on purpose. That's so stupid. Like, even if you think, okay, something's up, right? Like, so even if you're willing to say, I mean, I don't know what it is. I'm not saying, like, it was George W. Bush. I'm just saying it doesn't add up and something's not right. And then we move into so many other areas where things don't add up and you can have long, long conversations about it. And... Yeah, but what what I kind of want to come to, I mean, forgetting those, most of these people have probably tuned out now. By the time, the first time you mentioned Flat Earth, they were probably just like, like go away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what I want to say is... Um, I've been there, mate. You know, I've been there. You hear it, and you're like, man, no, just shuts down. Just yeah, shuts down. and I, I get it. I actually get it, you know, because sometimes I think it sounds ridiculous as well. But, you know, this is the conditioning that even me, someone who's like, taken loads of psychedelics, DMT, meditated and stuff and gone beyond, looked, peered beyond the veil and seen the other, like, other dimensions in my opinion and had these extraterrestrial experiences with other entities in my experience. Like, even I'm like, is this just, well, just Coronation Street and, and fucking, do you know what I mean? Like mundane shit, like songs of praise and steamy windows and stuff. And like, so anyway, like what I want to say is like, um, if those all people have gone, this is what's really where I'm at at the moment with all this is like, I'm kind of torn between like being a revolutionary and being a um, evolutionary. 
you know? Like, do you, is it a waste of time to try and convince anyone of the lies at the moment? Because it seems to take a lot of my energy, bro. Like, as soon as I open my up, myself up to these people, it's like an energy battle. It's like, guys, the world I'm seeing isn't adding up. And they're, they're saying, no, no, this is the world. This is the world. Like, this is the way reality is conducting. You've got it wrong. Like, this is right. This is wrong. This is righteous thing to do. You're a bad person. And it's using a lot of my energy to try and explain myself to people. But I, I'm trying to win people because part of me thinks this battle is outside. But then another part of me thinks every time you do that, you, I feel dirty. I feel dirty having to talk in this way and having to come under attack by these people and having to defend my position. So I want to know if, if it's all you, you said at the start, like, you know, it, it kind of comes back to what you said, your conclusion about the protest is that like, you can only go so far with it, but go into reading books, listening to people like David Icke and stuff and trying to convince people of like occultism and like control mechanisms and, things like this that you have to at some point just be like okay like i'm gonna start doing the breath work do the inner work and you know work on yourself only like that's kind of where i'm at you know but i'm torn i do get torn between the two i get pulled in because it's quite romantic you know to to be the like i want to because uh, I, I want my name to i want to state clearly that i don't agree with this because I don't want my kids to look back and be like one of those parents of like nuts, you know, grand, you know, it's like, oh, my granddad was a Nazi, you know, like he didn't do anything. He was part of like what happened and he was a Nazi. Like, I'd rather them look back on Facebook memories and be like, oh, look, old granddad was calling out this shit <laughs> back in the day, <laughs> you know? But yeah, what do you think about that? I think the internet's a powerful thing, man. The internet's such a powerful thing in this. You know, there's no excuses anymore because all the information to get started, to, to not even get started, just to, if you're being fed something, just have a look, well, what's the opposing view? You don't have to agree with it. And like that, all that, all that information is right there on your fingertips with, with the internet. Um, and no one's forcing you, no one's telling you this is the right way, the wrong way. Just have a look, sit on it and see how it feels within you. And if it strikes a chord, you, you roll with it. See how you get on. Like no one, like we're so we're so indoctrinated. You know, like the old, you stick your hand up in school, and it's like, oh, Miss, what about this? No, oh, that's a ridiculous point of view. Blah blah blah. blah. Shot down, mate. Bang. Get mm. back in line. And it's all conditioning, all conditioning. And it, you know, it, I was very fortunate to, you know, like you, I've had an experience with with, with ayahuasca. Um, three years ago, and that opened me up. Really, you started cracking down the the foundations of the social, oh, just the indoctrination of the system. Uh, and then since then, it's been it's been a lot of tears have been shed, mate. You know, it's not it's no easy work. It's a lot of tears, a lot of letting go of false beliefs, and uh, and I'm still in nursery, mate. I'm still in the whole grand scheme of of the spirituality and learning i'm like not even finished one curriculum of nursery yet mate you know it's just forever forever and ever and ever and um but you know i don't think you can go and bang in somebody's head against the, against the wall saying look this is the way it is it's yeah. i think killing them with kindness mate and you know it's understanding where somebody is and sort of realizing that, yeah, I was there. I was in that place. Everybody's been in that place at some point. And it's sort of just talking to them gently and just use your own experience and wisdom to gauge where this person is. And instead of going, right, here's the rabbit hole, down you go. It's like just little, little small baby steps. Yeah. Just to make it quick. And then, but ultimately, if you just say to them, look, a few things about, food a few things about vaccines a few things about the medicine that we're being told is good for us you can't force them to to to, to look at it mm. there comes to a point where they've got to flex their free will and have a look yeah if they're not if they are going to stay in ignorance ignorance and not take a look and use their time wisely then there's nothing you can do
that's all I'll say to that. You can't go banging people's heads against the wall. But no, you, no. you know, I mean, you can. If plant seeds. Around, yeah, you can plant seeds. That's all you can do, and you can keep water in it. And if, even if it takes ten years, you can keep adding water, and maybe what that in ten years' time it will it will sprout and germinate. But you know, ultimately, you can't do anybody's hard work for them. Yeah, bro. Yeah, because it's a long old ride, and that's probably not the point, is it? Like me and you, like I think <laughs> it's. I mean, once you've once you've had these like uh, psychedelic experiences, you just realise, like like you say, this when once the social conditioning starts to break down, you become kind of fragmented from society in some ways you know you've been chipped off the glass of somewhat you know and you're like a broken shard as it were and the rest of society is kind of there as a glass without you still in it and you're kind of saying to people like oh you're all actually bits of glasses in there but everyone's uniform and they're like no 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 we're like this is this is how it is you know and it's it's um it's it's hard isn't it it's like hard being seeing something from the outside and everyone else doesn't understand that they're in it. Yeah. And you can't tell them they're in it because they can't see it because they are it. You know, it's like, I don't know how to use words for it, but they, I just, what I love, man, about your attitude is you're so humble. And like you said, you're in nursery and stuff. And it's like, for me, that is the words of a wise man, you know, to just sit in the unknowing and be like, I'm forever a student. and they're so graceful and it's so you leave yourself open to learning you know you're always ready to pick up the next thing then you know because you're not you're not like coming in with this idea of like something that's just gonna block out your own intention and this ego which creates these blind spots in your perception you know it's like and it boils down to the way you actually uh, interpret reality at this point you know like this whole ego protection thing that we start to like, it starts to mold the way we see the entire reality and that, you know, I've got a lot of liberal friends who think, um, and they're always blowing up my comments on Facebook and stuff. And they, I don't know, it's so hard to break through, you know, it's so hard to, um, but I realize, you know, I go deep into very, into a lot of different topics and I can't, I've realized that actually like, you don't really, you're not on the same level of like research, like by far, like you, those guys, the difference is that like, they're like, oh, re an expert is done. And I believe in experts and stuff like that. And it's like, sorry to tell you, you know, but you need to do a bit more than that. You know, I, my personal belief system needs more than someone else's word. Like I want to then see who's talking, who's the man's tongue, who's saying the word, who's funded the study to give them the sentence to say the word. And it, when you go that step further, you realize there's a lot more to the stories, you know, and there's, a, and there's always more to the story, um, but it's hard. It's hard to get through to them. And yeah, like they, the differences with them is they're very strident in their beliefs, you know, and I've always come up against this stridency as being, um, an issue for me you know like it's like you you break out of the people talk about um like graduated animal farms it's like you break out of the mainstream media right and who's there to catch you like some guy some truth seeker or something and he's there but he might be a gatekeeper and you break out of him you know some like I'm trying to think of one like maybe like a david Icke or something and then you go to joe rogan and you're like, oh man, I'm at, but then you're in another one, you know? You're in another kind of walled area where it's like reality's at this point. And then you break out and you're in another one. And then you get to this point where you're like, oh my God, like I'm so, you know, I'm so estranged from the rest of um, society at this point. <laughs> and then you need to somehow build, build, build yourself back up and come back to it and figure out your job. You know, what is, what's my job within this, you know? The art of it you know it's it's you can't stay stagnant like nature's always changing we are part of nature so we must change with it and it's you know we're gonna it's the nature of us being here is to evolve and that doesn't mean physically that means 
on a on a spiritual plane on, on the soul evolution and yeah. you know you don't create a blade with without friction there needs to be uh, friction to create uh, lessons to learn to, to develop you, you, the cutting edge of the knife and um you know it's like you said uh i find people can get stuck oh this this is the one bang follow to what he says and then be blinkered to anything else that's coming into the side it's like have a look at this just sort of and then see how you feel about it but it's like no this is the way bang and um you know going back to to, to where i will to sort of saturday at the, at the protest like there's a lot of 100 percent they're they're not on board with the, with the mainstream media they're ch fact checking um and there's a lot of like, alternative media outlets that they're following which is fantastic yeah but don't stop there don't stop you know you the metaphysical needs to be breached. Understand what that means to you and understand mm. the different um, the different structures, be it the West, be it the East, that explores the, the metaphysical side of our lives. Because, you know, I'll just say this. Uh, do you define yourself as the body or do you define yourself as something driving the body? Now, if you define yourself as something that's driving the body, what is that something that needs to be explored? And there's many ways to do it. It just needs a little bit of homework. Yeah. And that is that very thing, that very idea there that you're talking about, that idea about identification is the nexus point of separation between uh, spiritual, like materialism and spirituality. Once you, and um, that is the question, isn't it? Like, uh, like, does body give rise to mind and consciousness? Like, the likes of the intelligentsia, like Sam um, Harris and all that go on about. They're like, oh, consciousness is just an illusion. Free will is just an illusion and all this. And they're selling that idea. <laughs> or, or you can go into this other space where there's, wow, like a lot of, uh, a lot of experiences reside there and it's but that is the that is the cultural separation and i believe that the people who are in touch with the that that non-physical thing they're handling this whole thing a bit better one of my friends who have like mostly materialist atheist people have been really badly mentally affected by the uh, looking at it by the uh, lockdowns and social distancing but mate here in goa where everyone's like a transcendental kind of minded hippie. Bro, people are just loving it. People are just doing India's this. India's long conquered land, mate. In India's never been conquered, mate. You know, they've had, it's been, people have, you know, for, for centuries, you know, colonies, col col colonial, colonialists have come over and, and tried to conquer India. And they've never done it, mate. They've never breached the heart of India's beliefs. I mean, it's nowhere near what it was uh, mm. 100, 200, 300 years ago. But, still an unbroken land and it's yeah sacred, mate. you're right it's very sacred but going back to, to to that it's like mate the government has got too much power that is that is the the hardship of where we are in the west we've mm. allowed the government to have too much power um and all they've got to do is threaten to take away x factor on a saturday night that luxury of sitting down and watching your television the, the threat of that being taken away from you, and you'll turn around and say, no, we don't want that. We just do take whatever you want. Just don't let, let us have our TV and our warm showers and our easy to access food. And they've got you. And it's such, an, it, it, it's such a hard place to live now in the West because you're penned in. And the idea of you know, taking on that spiritual route is so scary, mate. So scary because it's... it's it, it's just you know it, it, it takes some balls man, big time. yeah yeah because you're in a stag you're in a stagnation aren't you the energy around you is stagnant and you're trying to like push and make things happen like get some flow going with your friends but it's like oh, no i think we're just gonna like you know like go home and have a pie and like you know watch some netflix and i yeah see you later and all this is hard to get things going isn't it you know and it, things do get going but it's getting worse. Like England has been a great place for events and for festivals and for all this. There's amazing communities of people there. But yeah, it is, 
you know, we're only one generation away from it not being like that, you know? The thing is, like, you've got, you've got such a, you've got this new age movement now, and, you know, it sort of takes the, the hard work aspect away because, because it, it, it becomes, this new age movement, I find, is more of an entertainment factor, and it's all airy-fairy, and it sounds all lovely. Oh, yes, let's all be loving to each other. It's all, oh, it's all, blah, blah, blah. it's all entertainment. It's all just new age bullshit, mate. Yeah. You know, the, it, it's, the root is lonely and it's hard. But once you learn and get insights into stuff, there's no going back. And yeah. you take that and you grab it. And it, and it is, it is liber, liberating. Yeah, you bro. Realize all this shit that we are conditioned to think we need and conditioned to think we don't need. Uh-huh. You don't need no you know and when you when you're in that position you re, you re, it's, there's a part it's a powerful state mate because you're no longer acting in a state of fear oh i need this oh i need that it's like no i don't and it, if i choose to want it then i will get it but i don't need it i don't need anything you're just resting in power at that point it's like a throne isn't it you know you just sat there and it's just I'm good. I'm, you know, it's like the, the addict, this is what we all are addicts for like our own brains chemistry at this point. But like, it's such a weakness, you know, like not, yeah, everything. Like there's something I'm on at the moment. It's like, I've realized how like eating is more of an emotional thing for me than actually nourishment and sustenance. Mm. And that's, a, that's, a, I'm, I'm, the, in the thick of it at the moment, I'm on no conclusion to it, but it's it scared me to how like we eat for emotional and satisfaction. It's very like it's it, uh, the, the Egyptians said a quarter of what we eat is for our nourishment of the body. The other three quarters funds the doctor. <laughs> Do you know wow. we literally don't need that much. No, uh, it's only when you begin to fast and water fast and try and cleanse the body, clear all mm. the rubbish out. Really, like, it's all up here, man. It's all up here. But yeah, totally. What do we do? What do we do? You know, you go to the old traditions of like breatharianism and sun gazing, and there's other ways of getting food yeah. and material. But there's all there's also like this uh, huge aspect of science that's like breaking down each molecule you know you need this uh this one and this one and this one and they do your bloods and they're like oh and you need this long chain this and this and it's like oh where's your b b12 and all that and and i kind of think to myself like i mean i'm not saying the science but for me it's like so left brain materialist looking way to look at food it's like when i see you just you look with your eyes don't you you see fruit veg banana like kiwi yeah like, <laughs> you just and, and it's like this isn't it it's like that was nice and for me being vegetarian for like so long like i'm being totally fine with it as well like and then being vegan for so long like i don't know right now i'm, I'm fine it's been a long time i understand some people have issues but yeah, well, I, but I have are. to I have to wonder this I have to wonder this like is the issues that people experience is that like a big um, detox that they're doing because once you start to like clean the blood once the blood gets clean then your blood constantly gets re uh, distributed with the toxins again doesn't it because it, apparently it gets stored in all your muscle fat is that right like all these different chemicals and toxins and everything so when your blood is clean then it's like okay the blood's clean we can do another dump and it yeah next next lot next layer. lot next layer exactly so like people are like oh no i can't handle this diet it's making me sick but it's actually like there's going to be ups and downs you're going to have to get through this there's like many many years of bullshit you've been putting into your body and like eat your do your green juices and your green fasts and stuff and do it for like you know do it for a year if you want you know like just take take your time of it and sometimes you know when, when you're not feeling well I've come to like welcome it a little bit, you know, like I had a bit of a chest started with a cold came down into my chest and I had a bit of a, I've still got a little bit of a phlegmy chest, but I was really welcoming it. Like after the cold went and it kept turning dry cough and then chest. And now I'm like, 
that was I feel good after that. You know, my chest feels like it's cleaned itself. My started here and it's just cleaned everything. It's like a shedding of my inner passive inner. You know, the mucus is like a shedding of your inner kind of like passages and everything. You know, I'm like now I feel like rejuvenated and fresh again. It's like you welcome these things and. Yeah, it's it can, it's the body healing itself, isn't it? You know, when you're sick, it's like, yeah, man. What a fun, when when a layer, when you manage to shed a layer of, of, of like rubbish that you built up over the years and years and years, um, you know, the mind and and the soul comes in with it. There's an there's an element there which a layer comes off that as well, and then it brings you more in, new insights, and you're like, wow that's going on. I didn't know I was capable of this. I didn't know this was possible. I didn't realize I'm realigning myself to the truth, you know, the vibration of truth. Yeah. Um, you're doing the hard work. You're pulling yourself out of the cesspit that's been created around us. Yeah. And, you know, I'll, I'll go back to uh, the ayahuasca. I, I've told you before, uh, I had a vision where, you know, I went for a really purgatory evening and I got out the back of it and I felt awesome. And I just had this vision of um, like my light just getting a little bit brighter. And then I was shot to Sweden and this person, their light just grew ever so slightly. And what I'll take from that is, you know, we all have our own individual consciousness, our object, you know, our, we all, we're all in the sovereign beings, but we all share the subjective consciousness. And whatever's going on in that subjective consciousness, we all have a duty to, to deal with. It's all gonna, it's gonna come out in us some way because that is our, you know, we all, this, this the thing of, oh, we're all one, we're all one. But no one actually explains, what do you mean we're all one? What, what does that even mean? It means we all share like that, that one subconscious mind. And if, if someone's vibration raises, the subconscious mind vibration raises. Therefore, as my light grew slightly, the subconscious mind of man got a little bit brighter and somebody in Sweden picked that up in the ether and their light got a little bit brighter and there yeah. was, they, they were able to just, just, just in, think of it on terms of that. The more and more people that are able to shed those layers of toxins and allow yeah. their light to come out, the subconscious mind that we all share it's going to get a little bit brighter, a little bit lighter. Wow. Wow, bro. Amazing. Like, that is fucking music to my ears, bro. And it's telling me, listening to you saying that, it's telling me, Jackie, boy, you've got work to do, you know? Like, you've given up... <laughs> we all have, Jack. I've given up smoking. <laughs> I've given up smoking and I've, like, not been drinking alcohol and, and whatnot. But I know, like, you come on, Jack, the exercise is there. You, you could eat a bit better, you know? Like... You could like flush yourself, drink a bit more water, like get get some more raw foods in you and stuff, juices and everything, and a couple less samosas a week, maybe. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, that's on a that's on a that's on a physical, you know, that's on that like a material level, you know. This, yeah, the hard work you do when you go into, the, you take a fast, you 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 meditate every morning, you speak the words of truth, you do what. Is what you know to be right and, and following your conscious compass, you know, you're doing the right thing, mate. You know? Yeah, bro. Nice one, man. Yeah, mate, so much to think about and unpack there. And it's like, I'm so glad to like have someone like yourself, like just, just what you said then about the collective vibration and stuff. It makes so much sense. And it, we, me and Samuel, who, I spoke to in my last video had exactly the same conversation or more or less the same conclusion and uh yeah we um we uh like it's really interesting this it's a whole conversation in itself really i'll go, go into it a little bit but this idea of like collective resonance it's like um it's like music really isn't it it's like when you tune yourself when you become harmonic, when you become um, geometric, when you like refine your the chords 
of your different, you know, because we've got these different centers, right? We've got these different energy centers. For someone who's more materialist minded, I'll you can explain it like this. You know, you can think, right? You can think, you can use your mind. You can feel, you can feel emotions. You can sense, you know, you can sense heat. You can, there's all these different senses, you know, that we've got and there's different, they work in different oscillations, you know, they work in different frequencies and some people will call it chakras, some people will call it senses, some people can call it other things. But like once you start tuning these up and getting them like working, like it's really profound. It's something that's an ancient science that is mapped out in India. Like they have, they have, it's not like something that's abstract. It's something that they've written down and they've like studied and it's been there for thousands of years, all written down in Sanskrit. People teach it to this day and it's like, you can learn it, you can tune yourself up and it, you know, there's even, there's even materialist science, which backs up the claims that like they, they've done tests where like people, many people meditated in this area and this day and crime rates went down every time, every time people meditated in this, at these areas, crime rates reduced. And it's like, you go out your house in the morning, you smile at someone, they're going to feel happy about themselves. You can make someone's day with a smile and you feel people We're so sensitive. And we're so, but we don't really know we're sensitive. We don't know how sensitive we really are, you know? Like when you go out and you, you know, you're frowning and that, it's just, you just circulate in this, this anger. But if you can just yeah. spread that little bit of fairy dust, you know, if you can just tune yourself up. And the crazy thing is, this is what, in my opinion, this is the story of Buddha. This is the story of Jesus. This is the story of like the enlightened beings. They were the ones who at some point were able to tune themselves up to the point of like, they weren't just a, they were powerful enough to affect people with their presence. You know, they would come there with so much love, so much prana and energy built into them that they could just stand there and people would fall in love, you know, with life. And they would like, go and just liberate with their own, you know? And that's what I think might happen, bro. Like, that's the way I'm seeing it. You know, we have the remnants of it with the stories and all. But it makes sense, you know, it, it, you, you see it in everyday life, you know, you can affect people with your presence. People have a presence, we talk about it, it's built into our language already, it's not, it's not something too abstracted from like science even, you know, like that you could like have such an effect. People are enigmatic. People have charisma. Like what are these things? Can you just boil these things down to just, um, you know, like small things? And it's a different kind of magic is, is, you know, it's like heart. It's like, it's not like left brain magic. It's like right brain magic. It's not like NLP manipulation because that's what this time has been about, right? It's been about like neuro-linguistic programming, manipulation, uh, oppression and, and getting people to do things for you and like harnessing people's energy. But this is about like affecting people in the same way. It's still manipulation, but it's like from love. It's like, it's like, you know, it's a gift. It's not a take, it's a giving. It's, but it's still a kind of magic. And it's like that kind of like, yeah, bro, that's the way I'm seeing it. That's the, that's, that's if anything, the way I can see this whole thing unfolding, um, eventually, um, love the idea of it being a kind of tied in with astrology as well. And like portals and stuff. And it being this kind of like, when you get through a certain point, it's like, okay, now shit's gonna, get metaphysical, you know? Now we're gonna to start to feel, cause I feel it bro, I don't know about you, but as I sit here now, I can feel this channel, like from my root up through here, through here, especially here and especially here. Like this to me now is feeling like a powerful spot, more than I used to when I was young, you know? Like now this is a very visceral feeling for me, my third eye. And not like I'm like, oh, I've opened my bird air. It's like, I just feel this intensity here, you know? And I can okay. feel, yeah, okay. I can, I can, I, it's a new type of sensation. And yeah, man, it's, it's kind of telling you that 
Yeah, it's all real, you know. You, all your fantasies and all your dreams and you thought, you know, your, your rational mind kind of downplayed it for a while. They told you Santa Claus wasn't real and you had your little kind of like, you believed magic was a lie, but then actually it's not. It's all there and there's going to be a reckoning, you know. There'll be a day of reckoning. It doesn't take much to like look into how far this goes back and how many people have um, practiced the what what we're talking about right now i mean anybody that thinks we are the furthest advanced civilizations of the earth how the hell did as you said the sanskrit um indians understand our, our the chakra systems you know how do they build such magnificent structures yeah. i i really do not think we are at the cutting edge of civilization i think we've actually got a long way to go yeah and, um, when you when you look at the scriptures and and the writings of these old civilizations, and we compare that to what we've got going on today, we've got such a long way to go. And that all comes down to hard work, my friend. You know, yeah. if I, I would go back to the, the, the protest. I think yeah, people have got to come together, but it can't be the cultish. Oh, let's all get together and shout and scream. People have got to come together, knowing they are sovereign spiritual beings. And you are joining forces with other sovereign spiritual beings to turn around to the oppressors and say, no, it's not happening. It's not happening. Um, and, but the other part of me thinks if enough people do that inside work, we won't even need to get together. Exactly. Exactly. The system will just fall away. It will just decay, you know? Because it's held up by the people. That's the thing, you know? Like... It, it has, like, the police officers who are there doing the job, you know, if they were just like, nah, fuck it, let's all just fucking go home and build, you know, start building fucking fences and raising fucking animals and, you know, and, like, fucking build, doing gardening and that, like, there'd be no more system, would there, you know? It would just be, like, permaculture and stuff and, like, fucking hemp. There'd be fucking hemp everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I mean, let's say we've got 100,000 people together, march the streets, knock down the government, then what? Who's, yeah. who's, who's fighting out to be leader? Who says we even need a leader? But anyway, who's, who's, who fights it out to be leader? And whatever that person brings in, it's going to piss other people off. So yeah. It's a vicious circle. Yeah. It's a vicious circle. It's aligning yourself to the truth, realizing that we hold this system up. And we won't even need to march because things will rapidly change. In the I agree. I agree, bro. I totally agree. And it's, yeah, it's not all about this, like, you know, it's not like life is then like, oh, utopia. It's like, it's always going to be hard work, guys. You know, that's the point. Now that, now that mummy, now that we've got off mummy and daddy, like the welfare state is like basically like being in daddy's pocket still. And the, you know, like, not like the NHS is a good thing, but it's kind of like mothering, you know? It's kind of like we're still on the teat, you know? It's like, oh, the hell is that? It's, 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 a, it's like done away with. The NHS gives somebody the excuse that somebody else will deal with my health conditions instead of taking ownership for their body and their own health conditions. It's taking the emphasis on them doing the work, to understand how the body works, what they're uh, eating, how that, how what they're eating affects them, and ultimately taking on that problem of whatever ailment and dealing with it. I mean, if you break a leg, fantastic NHS, you know, hands up, you cannot go wrong there. Any physical ailment which you can see, fair enough. When you're eating so much crap, and you'll develop diabetes. And then you turn and say, oh, I need to, need to deal with it. I'll go to the doctor. You're handing over the blame. You're handing over the, you know, you're taking, you're giving away your, your own, the ownership of your body to somebody else. And it's like, right, I've developed the symptom. I need to cut this off from the root, which is all the shit I've been eating, and do what it takes to reset the body and allow the body to do what it naturally does and rebuild. Built you up from the ground, no, no, no. didn't it? Built yeah. you up from the fucking ground, and it will, and it will maintain itself as well, bro. You really inspired me, bro, to do a proper fast tomorrow. I'm gonna go at it tomorrow, like have a proper fast day. Day's day one for me, mate. That's why I'm on it. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, dude. Fucking man. Mate, like, I'm just thinking, that's like, I think we've, I think we've done a fair bit. We've covered quite a lot. Is there anything else you'd like to, like, stick in at the end? Um, just that, um, understanding what, what, whenever, when these airy fairy people say, oh, we're all one, just think about that. What does that mean? What does that mean? If we are all one, then we all share the same aspect of consciousness. And that's always, that is the way to, to deal with these things by, by changing the one thing that we all share because that's the one string that we all have attached to each other once that gets pulled and it's pulled in the way of truth we all get pulled into alignment nice yeah man i feel that thanks a lot man thanks for like letting me record this and yeah sharing your experiences it was amazing, man. You're a natural and it was sweet. So, yeah, nice one. I'll, I'll stop recording, but I'll, um, so yeah, I'll, but I'll still talk to you. <laughs>